Welcome, everyone. Um, thank you for attending our launch of our 2010, 2010 uh, webinar series brought to you by iZigSec. Um, I just want to very quickly introduce myself, and then we will hand over the webinar presentation over to our fabulous colleagues from WTW Link. Um, my name is Alex Ramperia. I'm with iZigSec. Um, and as I mentioned, I, I want to thank everyone for attending our webinar, um, How Strong Is Your Brand, uh, presented by Valerie Sokolowski, as well as Elizabeth McNabb of WTW Link. Uh, we're very excited to have um, everyone attending this particular webinar. Uh, we have a number of uh, Ivy Exec members who have joined us, as well as um, members from our partner organizations, including um, the National Association of Women MBAs, Columbia Business School, Goizieta School of Business, as well as the Anderson and the Ross School. And so we're very, very excited to have so many individuals on board. Um, and before um, I hand it over to, to Elizabeth to make, um, make the introductions, I just wanted to very quickly go over a few logistical items um, just to make sure that the webinar runs as smooth as possible. Um, just so that you are aware, we are muting all of the attendees at the beginning of the presentation. And we're doing that just to ensure a very good level of sound quality so that when Valerie and Elizabeth are presenting, um, they are able to do so in a very uh, 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 clean manner, if you will. Um, so just be aware of that. At the end of the presentation, um, we will have a Q&A session where we will be um, opening it up to, to questions uh, from you. And uh, please do note to, to jot down any questions that you have. Uh, we will unmute the mic at that point during the Q&A session so that you do have an opportunity to ask Elizabeth or Valerie uh, specific questions related to the presentation. Um, and at any point, should you have questions um, that you would like to uh, direct to, um, uh, to the presenters, um, there is a chat bar on your control panel. Um, and I ask that so that we have a, a nice balance um, while Valerie is presenting. Feel free to send any questions to Elizabeth. Um, she will be more than happy to answer any specific questions that come up during the presentation while Valerie is presenting. Um, and I think that's about it. So with that, uh, Elizabeth, I'm going to hand it over to you. I'm going to make the presenter. And we can get started with the presentation. You bet. Thank you, Alex. Well, I am so delighted to be with you and have with me one of our finest experts on W2W Link, which is Valerie Sokolowski. After Valerie presents, I'm going to come back and share with you more on the vision and take a look at W2W Link as one of your resources as a partner from Ivy Exec. So I want to hone right in on the wonderful introduction to Valerie and her presentation. Valerie is just literally one of the best global experts on personal branding. Valerie hails from being an executive coach, a management consultant, and a communication expert across uh, a number of different venues, media venues, being an executive coach and consultant inside of Fortune 500. And what I think she brings is the ability to coach and guide and elevate leaders that are rising leaders in their first years in a company but are accelerating to get to the C-suite and those that are in the C-suite and guiding them to guide the vision of the company, drive their communication, and drive their presence. And so I think what Valerie brings is to everyone on this call today and those that are in her reach an ability to be more successful. So with that, I'm going to hand uh, the present presentation over to Valerie Sokolowski. And Valerie? All right. OK, is everything up and running? I believe so, Valerie. We're, we're seeing your PowerPoint right now. That's great. Well, I'm really excited to be with all of you today. And I look forward to sharing and inspiring all of you on this call to work on your personal brands. I'd like to give you a little bit of background about why I'm so passionate about this topic. It actually, the buzz of personal branding started in 1997 when Tom Peters wrote an article called Brand You. And that article started people kind of talking about, well, what's he talking about brand you? Well, way back then, Tom Peters was saying, you know what? It's no longer just the company that's important to be branded. You within your company need to have your own unique brand so that you stand out from the crowd. Well, I want you to know that when I went through and was vetted in the personal branding process and became a vetted uh, strategic brand coach several years ago, 
after that process, I make decisions differently. I now know very clearly for me and for my business what is on brand for me and what's off brand. And I can tell you that I immediately got off of some committees and even a board position because they just weren't on brand. So every day I ask myself, is what I'm doing right now consistent with my brand? You know, in 1981, when I started the company, I always knew that I wanted to focus on people skills and the importance of building relations and standing out from the crowd. In fact, statistics tell us that 85% of what keeps us successful in business today has to do with how strong is our personal brand and how well can we build relationships. And so my tagline is companies improve when people improve. So I've been niched in this for many years and written books around professional presence. But when I heard about the personal brand process several years ago, I just had to learn about it. So today, I have a deeper sense of my reputation, a stronger way to make decisions, more self-confidence in my business development, knowing that I'm coming from my strengths and not afraid of showing them. So. The great news is that everyone here with me today on this call is interested in professional development, or you wouldn't be here. And thank you again for joining. And I know that you each have a brand that makes you unique. You just may not be aware of it because you're so busy focusing on your clients and helping them be successful. So for the next 45 minutes or so, we're going to focus on you. And we'll cover three things. First why you need to think about yourself as a brand. Then we'll look at the world's strongest brands and how they relate to your personal brand. And finally, I'll share at a high level the three-step personal branding process that I went through and now take my clients through. So my objective is to provide you with some approaches that you can take to create more success for yourself and your organization. So here we go. I actually have a couple of polling questions. So before we move ahead, I'd like to see what brought you to this webinar today. So please answer this question. Are you going through a transition into a new role or a new job? Yes or no? All right. Are you looking to move up in the organization that you're currently in or be stronger in your brand? Yes or no? And I'll wait a few moments to see what I'm getting as responses. Okay. The first one, Valerie, um, for are you going through a transition into a new role or a new job? Um, the results, I'm not sure if you're able to see it, Valerie, but it's 83% say yes, 17% um, say no. Okay. And for the second question, are you looking to move up in the organization you are currently in or be stronger in your brand? Again, um, interestingly, 83% say yes. 17% um, say no. OK. So we've got some pretty dynamic people here or who are moving ahead. And the purpose of that poll was at the very beginning just to see whether you're in transition or wanting to move ahead in your current role. The point is we all need to find ways that we can differentiate ourselves in a very competitive work environment. So let's focus for a few minutes on your personal brand and make it very relevant to you by asking the following questions. First of all, let me just say that the answers that you come up with are why it's increasingly important in managing your career and driving marketplace growth. So the first one, what are your most unique brand attributes? In other words, what are the words that people would use to describe you? One way to think about this is, 
when you think about previous introductions that people have made for you, have they simply given your rank and file? Or did you hear them say things like, you know, I'd like you to meet Jim Baker. He's one of the most forward-thinking, focused executives in our company. Well, pay attention the next time you're introduced. What words do people use? Because that means that you've been branded in a certain way. And better yet, what words would you like to put in someone's mouth about you? And how can you do that? By using them yourself in your own introductions. There you go. And in a well-crafted personal brand statement, which will be described a bit later in the program. All right, the second question. How do you stand out from others who do what you do? There are certain criteria that are important, obviously, for you to be able to do the job that you do. But my question is, what can make you more noticeable? What do you bring to work every day that's an ingredient that no one else has? What's different about you? And what are you known for? Well, let me give you an exercise that might help on this. I'd like you to think about someone in your career that you admire as a professional. And with that person in mind, write down the attributes that you think set them apart in your opinion. So go ahead and write down a few attributes that set that person apart. All right, good. Now. What do you think someone else who holds you in high esteem would say about you? The reason you see that this is important is that your brand resides in the hearts and the minds of others. It's your reputation. And through a 360 assessment that I'll talk about in a few minutes, you can know what that is. Again, we'll learn more about this. The third question, do you know how others perceive you as a brand? You might well know what others think about your work. That comes from your performance reviews, right? But if they likened you to a brand, that's a little different. What would it be? And the fourth question is, what's your communication plan to express your brand? Or even, do you have one? You see, even if you're clear about what your value proposition is that you offer, are you really reaching the people that need to know you? And do they hear about you often enough? And is what they hear about you consistent with the way that you want to be perceived? All right, these are all good questions. And as Charles Steinmetz says, no man becomes a fool until he stops asking questions. So let's take a look at the new world of work as we consider branding and leveraging your network. You know, the world that we're living in, I call it a world of raplexity. And that's two words put together. It means rapid change with complex issues. I want you just to think about what you did and how you did your work just five years ago. How many of you would say, like I, I'm doing more work with less resources, and I have more on my plate than I ever have before? Yep. We're living in a faster, better, cheaper world with more competition. And I know I'm speaking to the choir on this. And business is more and more about building and cementing those strong relationships. The very fact that you're listening to this webinar means that you're a learner. And learners are of great value to the organization. Yet it's more important than ever that you distinguish yourself from others. So if you are motivated to focus on building your brand, then the uncertainties of today in the workplace will give way to the exciting opportunities that lie ahead. Listen to some interesting facts that bear this out. I hope this is encouraging. One fact is that top 10 jobs in demand in 2010 this year didn't even exist in 2004. Just think about the college courses that are available today that we may not have had access to when we were in school. I wonder what our children's job titles will be. And here's another fact. We are currently preparing students for jobs that don't yet exist, using technologies that haven't been invented in order to solve problems we don't even know are problems yet. Now that's scary. 
And people are constantly raising the bar, and that keeps us on our toes. The last fact I love, one week's worth of the New York Times contains more information than a person was likely to come across in a lifetime in the 18th century. Now, how does this relate to you? Well, while no one loves change but a wet baby, it does create more opportunities. Tom Peters was quoted as saying, there's never been a time so laden with opportunity for anyone with a mind to shuck tradition and take the plunge. And I'd like to add and build a strong personal brand. So here's another polling question for you. Where are you in career development? Meaning, select the title. Um, are you a senior management director and above? Are you in mid-level management? Are you an individual contributor? Or are you an entrepreneur? Which one? The results show that about 44% are senior management, um, mid-level 6%, individual contributors 31 and entrepreneurs 19%. OK. So we've got a variety of people listening. Well, let me tell you, here's the deal. Organizations simply can no longer manage your career for you. You are the CEO of your career. And here's a perfect example of what it used to be like. I'm going to share with you about my dear father-in-law, who's since passed, Papa, as he was affectionately known, who worked for the same company for 43 years. Can you believe that? And like others at that time and space, if you did your job and didn't make too many waves, you retired with a gold watch. Well, actually, he only got a silver one. Those days are gone. That's history, and we all know that. So we have to be in charge of our own careers. And building your brand is necessary because there's lots of people who do what you do, but probably not in the way that you do it. So let's quickly talk about just brands in general. What you're looking at now is a list from Business Week and Interbrand. Every year they post the top brands in the world. Now, when you look at these logos, what I want you to do is not only acknowledge that you recognize them, but is there a word, a feeling, an association, something that connects these brands with you? And what makes them strong brands is that you're all thinking pretty much the same thing when you see these logos. You see, it's the emotional connection that you have with the company, its products, or its services. So let me show you what I mean on that. All right, when you see Disney, you probably think of things like family, fun, fantasy. When you see Apple, most people will say innovation, design. When you see Volvo, everyone says safety. And Starbucks is a brand I connect to. How about you? People know me for my fixation on a 180 degree, no foam, no fat latte, at least once a day. And it's not about the coffee. It's the feelings, it's the emotions that I, I associate with Starbucks. You see, they consistently deliver my custom coffee. They even know my name now and start making it the minute they see me walk in the room. I wonder how you order your coffee. So take a minute, if you have that pencil in hand, and write down some brand, maybe one of them that was on the screen, that resonates with you. And maybe three words that would describe that brand? In other words, what feelings or associations connect you with a strong brand? OK, the takeaway from this is that when you build your personal brand, you're going to do so based on who you really are. It's not about spin or creating an image for the outside world. So consider how you look for unique value from products and services you buy, your experience with them. Was it memorable? People are looking for the same thing. So here's the definition of a personal brand. It means being the best authentic self and standing out from your peers so that you can achieve your goals. 
what makes you unique is what makes you successful. It's your DNA. It's built through everything you do, every interaction, every decision you make. Your reputation built over time, not instantly. Your brand is a reflection of who you are and what you believe, which is visibly expressed by what you do and how you do it. The point is that no one needs to ask you what you bring to your position that's different or special. It should be apparent. So let's look at the definition of a personal brand a little deeper. It's really just your unique promise of value. It's unique because it separates you from your peers. It's a promise because you commit to delivering it in everything you do, and it's based on what's true and real and genuine, authentic about you. And it has value to your target audience. What I mean by that is those people who need to know about you so that you can be wildly successful, you can think of this as your reputation. Now, some people may be thinking, I don't want to focus on my brand. I need to be focused on the firm's brand. Well, in truth, Companies recognize that today organizations need to innovate to be successful. And innovation comes from creativity, and creativity comes from diversity. When I talk about diversity, I'm talking about down to the level of the individual. Because companies know that when the individual can contribute an ingredient that's not available from anyone else, that person delivers creativity, which yields innovation in the marketplace. If your company isn't delivering innovation in the marketplace, then you're a commodity, and commodities can comp compete on price, and that's not where you want to be. So to ensure that innovation, organizations need to help people unearth what makes them exceptional so that they can support the company's brand in a way that's authentic to them. So you can see that your company's brand and your personal brand do work together. I like this quote that says from Ann Lindbergh, it's just exhausting when you try to be somebody you're not. When you are being your authentic self, you're energized, you're empowered, you're confident and engaged. So you really need to dig deep and understand who you really are, where do you come from, and what's important to you so that you can integrate that information into everything you do in your work every day. Let me tell you a story. <clears throat> I'm currently working with a large financial services firm where the people are very bright and they're already successful. In fact, they're partners. And yet, they're gleaning a lot of insight into their own uniqueness and then how their strong personal brand aligns with the purpose and the value of the firm's brands. Well, one result this last year was that an individual changed his bio to reflect more about who he is, not just his credentials. And when his team went into a prospective client, the CEO of that uh, organization noticed his bio and made reference to it. And he talked about, the CEO talked about how interesting it was to him that this partner showed up as differentiated from his competitors, beginning with his bio. Now let me give you some examples of real people who do exude authenticity in everything that they do. Well, we all know Oprah. And isn't she known as the caring brand? And aren't these some words that most people would think about when they think about Oprah. If you had to come up with words or attributes to describe her, what other words would you come up with? And here's another one, Richard Branson, the intrepid brand. One thing can be said about Richard Branson. He is the consummate showman, <laughs> the iconoclastic Branson, the originator of the Virgin brand. And he recently hosted the Hollywood-style rollout of Virgin Galactic Spaceship Two, touted as the world's first commercial spaceship. It's going to take passengers on space, space excur excursions of two and a half hours at a cost of 200000 a ticket. And he says that about 300 people have already signed up for the flights. I don't know about you, but I think that would be terribly exciting. So. How do you start to look at your personal brand? Here's the process. They all start in three steps with EX, and that's because your brand is held externally in the hearts and the minds of others. 
I like to use the analogy of a gym. In fact, Harry Winston quoted, was quoted as saying, a gym is like a friend. Each one is unique and unforgettable. So when you think about yourself as a gem, the extract phase is that where do you find gems? You have to dig deep down into the earth. So in the extract phase, we unearth what is your promise of value. And then we take that stone that we've kind of rubbed off all the stuff that was on it, and we polish it so that it shines for your target audience. That means how do you express, how do you communicate your value to those who need to know about you? And then we take that stone and we put it in a setting. That's your brand community. It's about aligning your environment. How do you make sure that everything that surrounds you sends a message that's bolstering your brand rather than detracting from it? Well, you may be thinking, goodness, Valerie, this all sounds like a lot of hard work. <laughs> well. Here's the whip them for you, what's in it for you. This is what you'll gain from the process. First, incredible self-awareness. One client told me that she thought she knew a lot about herself, and she'd taken a lot of assessments. I'll bet many of you have, too. And yet this process helped her clarify and communicate what made her special and unique. You learn a lot about who you are and what's important to you, and that's critical. And then people begin to recognize your uniqueness and they become your ambassadors, your brand ambassadors in the marketplace. Visibility and presence, once you go through the entire process, you're just a little taller than before you went through it. As one man said to me, Valerie, this process literally unlocked me. I had lots of ideas and goals racing around, but this brought such clarity. It just made sense of them, and it gave me courage to go out and express myself in the marketplace. Differentiation, standing out, and being a brand that's worthy of remark. You differentiate yourself from everybody else who seemingly does what you do, everyone else who shares your job title, and you begin to understand what makes you stand out. You do become, as Tom Peters said, the CEO of Brand U. You put yourself in control of your career, not waiting for someone to give you the next reward. You start to increase your wealth. Strong brands are made. Strong brands make more money because it increases your value proposition. It ensures continuity throughout your career in a career that's incredibly impacted with continual change, as we've talked about. And the two most important things are you achieve your goals, and you do so in a way that's fulfilling because you're aligning who you are with what you do and how you do it. You know, we all try to find work-life balance, right? Well, actually, there's simply life. <laughs> and part of life is work. And we decide how that all meshes together. So if we can build work that's fulfilling, then these two won't be fighting each other because you'll be aligning who you are with what you do. So extract is learning a lot about yourself introspectively, learning about your peers so that you can differentiate, differentiate yourself, and learning about your target audience so that you can focus your energies where there's return on investment. A lot of research went into developing this three-step process. Highly successful people were interviewed to determine the factors that led to their recognition. And here are the four main things. First, be your own boss. As we said earlier, 30 years ago, organizations managed their careers for you. But now the hard reality is nobody does this anymore. So you really need to be thinking about managing yourself and your career. And it means thinking about your career all the time and thinking about what you need to do to continue to be successful and achieve your goals. The second principle is be willing to stand out and stand for something. If you're trying to please all the people all the time, you're not going to be very successful. In fact, that's the opposite of branding. Branding is about standing out and attracting those people who really connect with your message. So this is all about having the confidence and being willing not to please all the people all the time. Typically, if you're really convicted and you have a lot behind your belief, people will respect you even when they don't agree with you.
The third principle is forget this metaphor of a ladder. We've all done this. You know, when we look at the next rung of the ladder, that's when we think about updating our resume and getting out our network and making sure we're visible in the company and outside in the marketplace. Boy, we're really focused, and we want that next rung on the ladder. But once we get that rung, typically we forget about managing our careers entirely, and we go right back to our work mode, our voicemails, our emails, doing what we do every day, and it's not until seeking the next rung on the ladder when we start to think about our career again. Well, what's successful in the new world of work is thinking about your career with every single thing you do. How do I change the way I present in a meeting? How I speak on the phone? How I meet with clients so that it's adding value to my career? So you need to rethink everything you do every day and ask yourself how whatever you are doing is impacting your career. So we say get rid of the ladder and think of your career more as a ramp. Because on a ramp, every step you take, you're moving forward toward your goal. I'm not talking about an escalator where you're being moved forward. But this is a ramp where you have to move yourself forward and be deliberate and think about every step you take putting one step in front of the other, taking deliberate steps, thinking about every step in your career. And the last one is build your brand proactively. Successful people do that. People who do this intentionally and proactively create the visibility they need to reach their goals. So here's the first part of the extract phase. The first thing to consider are your VPs. What are they? And as I explain them, please recognize that these are very reflective thought processes that take some time to truly unearth and get to them below the surface. Your vision. How do you see the world could be? That can serve as a road map to your actions and your decisions. It's, it's kind of a guide to navigating change or reestablishing direction for your future. What's your vision? And then what's your purpose? Purpose meaning what's your role in turning a vision into reality? I believe that leadership starts with learning to lead yourself first, understanding your unique purpose in order to make your mark in this world. And then your values. Those are your operating principles. You carry them with you every day in everything you do, and they make you react and behave in certain ways. And if somebody steps on one of your values, Boy, does it go all over you. And finally, your passions. Those are those things that excite you, that energize you, that would make you get out of bed at 5 AM on a Saturday morning to do something or to talk about. We also look at your goals, because if you don't know where you're going, you'll end up somewhere else, so says Yogi Berra. If you know that this is where you want to go, then you point your brand here or there without knowing and being really clear on your goals, your brand is just sort of flailing about. So that's a little bit about what you need to know internally. Now, I said that your brand is held in the hearts and minds of others. So what about externally? Let me introduce to you what's called the 360 Reach Tool. And this is an assessment. It's the only web-based assessment that actually measures your professional reputation. It's the external perspective of learning what other people would say about you, what they would say are your greatest strengths. And then you can see how consistent this is with how you see yourself. At this point, about a million people around the globe have used it to date, like people in a Microsoft, J.P. Morgan, Amex, J&J, &J, British Telecom, Starwood Hotels, among others. And I've been certified in using this assessment and always get energized by the value that it brings to the organizations and the people that I work with. Here's just an example. <clears throat> the CFO had an epiphany that some of the brand attributes that others said about him outside of work included the word fun. And no one in his organization used that word. Now, this is a CFO, right? So he looked, when he saw this, he looked for ways that since his friends and people outside of work saw him as kind of a fun guy, well, maybe he should be showing that side of himself at the workplace. And so 
He looked for ways to bring his fun into the workplace, and people actually commented on how much more approachable he became. Another example is an entrepreneur who was rebranding her company and, and herself after several years of sabbatical raising her children. And through this work, she says, and I quote, I recognized what my value really was that I had been undervaluing all these years. I've begun to market my company with much more confidence. And she's now launched a very successful PR firm that's, uh, that's really going gangbusters. So here's another polling question for you. Here are some words that you might choose that you think people would describe, would use to describe you. And these are just a few of many, many on this assessment. So take a look at these words and select the top five that you think people would say about you. The top five. Okay. Valerie, can you see the results there, Valerie? I cannot. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll just uh, share those with you. Um, of the words that we provided, 67% um, uh, describe themselves as enthusiastic fun. 47 describe themselves as communicative. 93% um, uh, describe themselves as dependable or organized. 40% um, describe themselves as inspiring, genuine. And then finally, 20% um, describe themselves as competitive, future oriented. Well, if the majority of you said enthusiastic and fun, you're my kind of people. <laughs> and all those words are good. If you're interested in, in what others would say about you and if you'd like to take this assessment, just contact me after the webinar and I'll share with you how to do that. Okay, so where are we? Well, it's critical that once you know who you are, your authentic self, to understand who you need to reach. Who are those people who can influence your career? And what kind of a relationship do you have with them? For many of you, that might mean more than one target audience. It could be internal, a team that you lead, leaders you want to influence and get noticed. That's called managing up. Or it could be external for those client interfacing opportunities. We're all busy with our roles and our responsibilities. So if we're going to spend time raising our profile with our target audience, we need to be smart about how we go about that. And the key is not just demographics, but also psychographics. What do I mean about, what do I know about these people? So here's an exercise that you might do a little bit later. Take some time to write down everything you know about people in your target audience. Things like, what do they read? Where do they go to lunch? Where did they go to college? You see, knowledge is power. And as you seek to spend more time cultivating those relationships, both internally and externally, you need to know as much as you possibly can about your target audience. All right, so once you're clear about who you are and who you need to reach, now you're ready to construct your personal brand statement and use that as a guiding light or principle as you move toward communicating your brand. Now let me tell you something, folks. This is not easy. I worked on this and refined it for almost a year. And let me show you what mine is and tell you ahead of time. This is, yes, I can use parts of it as my elevator speech, but this is more for my, um, my sort of compass. It's, it's, I keep it at my computer. And when I'm making decisions, I stop and I read it. And I say, OK, this is really who I am and what I'm a, what's important to me. And so how am I going to make this decision? So here it is. I ignite the spark of enthusiasm in leaders to create a strong personal brand and professional presence that differentiates them in the marketplace. 
and creates greater success for themselves, their teams, and their organizations. So what you'll see in that is, first of all, some words that I got out of the 360 assessment where people said they saw me as enthusiastic and uh, an energizer and so forth. And then no matter what I'm doing, whether I'm writing my next book or I'm speaking or I'm in a training seminar, I'm all about helping other people create more success for themselves. I'll just read one more that might be another example. Here's one from um, actually a uh, senior manager. By consistently living my values of honesty, integrity, and ethics, I inspire trust and build enduring relationship, relationships with my company's employees and most valuable customers. These employees and customers look to me for advice, support, and recommendations, and through my constant attention to their needs, they become our best sales tool. So that's a couple just for you to kind of hear. So to truly get clear about your brand, you also need to know who your peers are and maybe your competitors also. What's the same about you as them? What are the table stakes that you must have to allow to be considered for a promotion or to win a contract? That's one thing. But then, what separates you? What's the difference? Here's an example, because if you can uncover that, then you can be all about getting that message and uniqueness out there. So the example or the exercise is this. On a piece of paper, put same on one side and different on the other. And then take a look at your peers, those who are striving to achieve the same goals you are, or your competition, those who are doing kind of the same things you are in the marketplace. What are things that are similar about all of you? And then what makes you different? Because when you find those things and you communicate them in every way that you can, then you're going to hit the big dreams. Well, the message is clearly, right? <laughs> to be outstanding, you have to stand out. All right, let's take a look at the second phase. First, we extracted your personal brand. Now we're going to express it, shine that gem off so that others see it and you shine it in your target audience's faces, those who need to know about you and need to hear about you more often. Um, one of the things I think is kind of fun is to think about the express phase in working on two things. This is a show and tell of your brand. Visibility is the show. Being sure people who need to know about you see you. And then credibility is the tell, which is all about demonstrating the value proposition that you've identified in the extract phase. So here's another polling question. When you think about the illities, have you published or e-published an article in the past few months? Yes or no? Valerie? Yes? Lizbeth, after you close this poll, if you could uh, transition, that'd be great. OK. Well, hopefully some of you have. If you like writing, it's a great way to bring visibility to your brand by expressing it in a white paper or a blog or an article. And then what about Google? Have you Googled yourself lately? Because the reality is other people are Googling you. You know, in careerbuilders.com, this is, I think, really interesting. 22% of hiring managers say they use social networking sites to research job candidates, up to 11% in 2006. And of those hiring managers who have screen job, who have screen job candidates via, they, they have screen job candidates via social networking profiles. So social networking is important. And here's another stat. 34% reported they found content that caused them to dismiss the candidate from consideration. So what's showing up when you're Googled? And then what about LinkedIn? If you're not on LinkedIn, send me your email, and I'll send you an invitation, because you need to be. 
And finally, the exude phase. And this is where, really, it's the easiest phase because once you know what your brand is and you've built a communication plan and you're expressing your brand in everything you do, then it's very easy for you to align your brand environment because you start to think about how everything is sending a message about that brand and because you're thinking in an on-brand way. You start to automatically align your brand environment, which is made up of things like your personal appearance, your office and your work environment, your personal brand network, and so forth. So your brand community consists of all the people who need to know about you so that you can be successful. And this includes the people who know you best inside the circle and all those who know you less well outside of your organization. The stronger you make your brand, the more it's going to radiate outward from that center. And people throughout all of these concentric wing, rings are going to understand who you are and what you're about, and they'll become your brand ambassadors. But you need to make sure that you're building value for these people also. And there's one rule in networking, and it's this. Ask not what your network can do for you. What are you doing for your network? I really believe that when you give, 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 you'll get, get, get. When you can constantly give to your network, you can be assured that when you need something from them, they'll be there to help you. So bring value to your network by visualizing every person in it and think to yourself, what kind of value could I create by maybe connecting Sue with Lisa and John with Mary? What kind of value could you add to their lives? And don't forget personally as well. And as we move toward the end of this session, let me just say, I know that all of you want to make a mark. You want to contribute and do so in a way that's fulfilling. So ask yourself, do you leave your mark on everything you do? On everything that you do. As the gem that you are, make sure every link in your brand persona is extracted, polished to shine for your target audience, and put in the best settings to exude the best that you are. So the final polling question is this. Does your office, desk, work environment, and your image communicate your brand, yes or no? And I hope you'll say yes. So in summary, I know we're going over a lot of material here, but the goal was for you to understand the entire process. So just as a reminder, the world has changed. It's up to you to manage your brand. It's the only constant in a world that's constantly changing. And the goal is to strive for career distinction. Remember, branding is about authentic, authenticity. What's real and genuine and authentic to you? It's about differentiation, differentiating yourself from everyone who seemingly offers the same thing you do and making sure that it is, and relevant to the people who are going to make decisions about you. The key message here is jump on the bandwagon now. Everyone in the world hasn't started thinking about this, and you have a huge leg up. The sooner you start thinking about your brand, the more quickly you're going to start building your brand and seeing your career and your business growth really jump to the next level. And so if you want to learn more, here's my information, and also something I just produced, which is called a video bio. You can click on this link and watch it or go to my website and see it. Liz Beth, it's time for Q&A. Excellent. Hello, Liz Beth McNabb, CEO of W2W Link. I'd like to share a couple highlights of how to have the resources as a partner company to Ivy Exec to each of you, and then we'll segue back to a Q&A around personal branding. Um, so I'm taking you to a look at w2wlink.com, and we've got both men and women on this call today. And so I want to offer to you that in both cases, this is a great resource. It's, it's W2W Link and the vision around it was to help professional women accelerate their career and get to where they wanted to go faster. My vision was after 20 years as a rising executive inside of uh, various Fortune 500 companies, including PepsiCo, 
and Sodexo and AT&T. Also joining corporate boards, my 40, both public and private. And across that time, as I mentored men and women, I saw different gaps in the resources and access. And so the women out there on this call, I'd love to talk to you about this. And for the men on the call, I'd love you to look at this resource. It's both there for you in terms of engaging those around you, engaging your peers, and maximizing your organization. W2W Link, as you look at the site, and by the way, we have a free level of membership if you come to the site and hit the register button or join us for the email, you can both get push content twice a week, and you can have uh, the ability to peruse the site uh, for two full articles or tools per day. And then we've got higher levels uh, that will look at some of the value of that. And so on the value, on the far left, you'll see the corporate fast track. This has a lot of tools and connection around those in a corporate career, and we a lot of you are in that uh, world. The entrepreneur journey has tools for those that are an entrepreneur or an innovator inside a corporation, or those that are doing it on their own, or like many today, have a foot in both worlds, or perhaps launching something around their busy day. Then we've got a networking career transition, which Ivy Exec is a person, personal, uh, great partner around this area, since they help you very much move that forward. And we have tools here to help in this self-assessing and driving it, and partners such as uh, Valerie to help in personal branding and maximizing your owning your career inside the company you're at, <coughs> at your career elsewhere. And then a fourth key area is work-life balance. Uh, one of our experts, Kathy Greenberg, would say it's work-life happiness. Um, it's probably out of imbalance, but it's, it's finding that sense for yourself. So I wanted to highlight that as you look at the site, if you were to go into an area like corporate fast track, you'd see a variety of articles. If you hit the search bar and were looking for an answer, um, perhaps at the end of the busy day, uh, a meeting that goes awry and you're trying to think about how to do it different, if you, if you were to hit the search bar, you can look and you'll see a variety of articles and tools come up. And so the tools are there 24-7. But the second thing about W2W Link that we've built there for you is the network circle area and the professional track area. Because what we bring is not only great tools, but also great connectivity to peers and experts to be able to have in an online setting and a, behind a private wall, you be able to ask the questions of others and get answers. And so to take a quick peek, by the way, to, to do that, you'd end up being a member. You'd fill out a confidential profile. And I was formerly the CFO and strategist at Match.com, so picture I've taken a lot of the science of matching and grouping and taking it to the professional side. And so we then match uh, people to others in the same stage in the career path. And we have great experts like Valerie that are there to be able to give you the wonderful resource that sometimes only a few have behind the executive coaching and get it for many of us and have it there for us around W2W Link. So secondly, a value of W2W Link is to be able to connect and talk to others inside a network circle. I've signed up before and filled out my profile, so that would happen, and then you'd be placed into, as you can see, I'm in a variety of circles. And so if I were to go into a circle, I'm going to show you a sample so that if you join a circle or you let others know on your team about the circles and they're in one, here's an example that if you went into a circle, by the way, if somebody posts or you do, it comes into your inbox as well or into your iPhone or your Blackberry, so you don't have to only be online to see the questions and answers going on. So you can basically then add a comment, write in a message, and be able to have a dialogue and have back and forth with the expert. Another area over here that I will um, lastly cover is the professional tracks area. We've got experts like Valerie, you can see here personal branding, and other tracks networking, leadership and change, global leadership, communication. And they've all been designed to have a self-assessment, a series of written audio and video to communicate the learning. And then after you see an executive our expert, you can close with your action plan. And we help keep you accountable to your plans by pushing that out to you in 30 and 60 days after you finish a track. 
and remind ourselves and help you measure against uh, the ability to say, did I put these actions in place? Because what we all know is if we write our actions down, we state it to a coach, and it comes back to us, we're more likely to drive to our results. So this whole professional track area comes with our gold and platinum memberships, and IV Exec will be letting you know about their ability to, to hand you a, a member discount over time as well. And so with that, I just wanted to give you some highlights of w2wlink.com. And we'll go back to the chat area so that you can ask questions of Valerie or anything of myself on personal branding or W2W. Great. And attendees, just to let you know, we've unmuted your mics. And so you can certainly shoot any questions that you have uh, over the audio line to either um, Elizabeth or Valerie. Well, let me open it with a question for you, Valerie, as we take in any others. Yeah, I'm thinking of you know the, the career transition area. I transitioned when I was building this company, and you're constantly rebuilding where your, your vision is going. But especially with Ivy Exec being around career transitions, um, as we build our messaging, we're thinking forward, we're leaving from somewhere we were, or leaving something behind, and really trying to rebuild the way we frame our career. How would you guide us and coach us to really you know, move forward with a different brand than what we met, might feel like we had the last three months or the last you know, week. All right. Well, first of all, it would be important to know what the current, what your brand is. Again, that's easy to do through this 360 assessment, which is sent out to um, everyone that you can possibly think of that knows you well enough to give good feedback certainly peers, colleagues, clients, customers, <clears throat> family, friends, etc. And have a clear understanding of how you currently are perceived as a brand. Take that good information, in other words, the strengths that come from that, and through coaching, um, what I would do is help you understand how to build on those things. And if anything comes back that is uh, a brand <clears throat> or things about you that you want to diminish, how can you do that? So that then the messaging becomes what you want it to be as your reputation as you step forward in your career transition. Any other questions? Valerie? Yes? We did, have a, we did have a question over, over the chat box uh, from an attendee. Um, Morgan asked, can I simply, uh, I'm sorry, here is, um, I have a highly respected boss. How do I set myself apart from him, both internally and my industry? Mm. Well, first of all, how wonderful, Morgan, that you have a highly respected boss. In other words, how do you show your brand to him um, and express it in a way that you stand out from the crowd and also in the marketplace? I would say that one way is to find opportunities to meet, be in front of him or communicate with him. Um, even if it's walking down the hall and saying hello, how do you say hello? Are you terribly exuberant? What is your brand? Who are you? Are you trying to, uh, when you say hello to him just in the hallway, are you, are you trying to be somebody or not? No be the person you are, but make an effort to uh, communicate with him even in, in down, walking down the hall. But have, have opportunities where maybe you send him articles that you think this is knowing his psychographics that might be important to him. What books does he read? What uh, articles does he find of value to the business, to the company, to his goals and his vision? If you find something online, shoot it to him. Just thought you might like to see this. Find ways, back to the illities, find ways to be visible and credible to him. In the marketplace, get out there and be visible in the areas or the um, organizations that would make sense for you. What organizations are you, are you a member of? What meetings do you go to? Can you get yourself on a committee and be more visible? So just think those illities, visibility and credibility. What can you do to show those two things and in showing your brand? Morgan, I hope that helps. Thank you.
any other questions from the attendees? I have a couple others, Valerie, that I have jotted down. Perhaps you can kind of shed light into those. Um, there's one that, that I noted um, that I, I would love to hear your, your thoughts on, and that is, um, how long does it take to really establish one's brand um, in the workplace? <laughs> I wish I could say instantaneously. I think if you um, listen to the three steps of, of branding, it takes some reflective time on you to first of all determine what you want that brand to be and how you want to build a communication plan. Part of the branding process that I think is really important is what's important to you? What is it you're trying to achieve? What's the goal? Is it a business development goal? Is it a promotion? Is it career transitioning into maybe another industry? What are those things? And then when you're really clear on that, your goals and where you're trying to go and what's important to you, then it takes some time to go out into the marketplace and build that reputation, both internally, by the way, and externally. Um, so I can't say that it's done instantaneously, but I would say that with clients that I've worked with, after they have completed the personal branding process, which takes several weeks, I would say within the year, they probably have gotten some great strides in showing their brand internally and externally with some results. Great. Thank you, Valerie. Any other questions? Hey, um, Lizbeth, would you mind kind of closing it out for us, perhaps? Oh, that'd be great. Thanks, Alex. Well, you know, I always learn. So thank you, Valerie, for sharing. And you've really been an influence on me and, and a lot of others around me. So thank you for all these learnings. And thank you to Ivy Exec for hosting us. And I'd really, you know, like to encourage everybody on the call to, you know, please join W2W Link. Um, know that this is a resource really linked to you by Ivy Exec. And for the gentleman on the call, you know, please grab an article or join. And as you get an article, forward it to a client or forward it if you're interviewing to somebody you, you met. And share it as a resource. I've seen that to be very powerful and shows a lot of awareness and a lot of, of ability to uh, develop the organization. And so doing that is just you know, coming to the site and hitting the register and join button. And secondly, we've got a tool coming to you uh, via Ivy Exec, which is a personal branding quiz that Valerie has drafted and is sharing. So you can take that to continue to reflect in this area. And feel free to come back and join the professional track of personal branding and take a self-paced, but what would be real effective to, to handle over four weeks. Um, from front to back and learn with Valerie. And she shared her further information and her link are, is on our site along with her bio to find other ways to work directly with Valerie. So to Ivy Exec, thank you. And to all of you as you look at January and this wonderful 2010 that's getting stronger every week, uh, you know, good luck to you and many blessings to you. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. And just, uh, just to close, I just want to again thank everyone for attending. And I sincerely want to say a special thanks to, to Valerie and Lizbeth of W2W Link um, for sharing their tremendous insight on, on a very, very salient and important topic for our network. Um, and as next steps, as Lizbeth mentioned, we will share with you um, follow-up information that will include the personal branding quiz. And we will also, um, so that you have that opportunity, that we will share um, contact information for how you can get in touch with Valerie as well as W2W Link. Um, and certainly, um, moving forward, if you do have any specific questions, feel free to contact us. We will have our contact information at Ivy Exec and that follow-up email as well. Um, and with that, uh, I wish everyone a good evening, and we hope to see you at our next webinar. Have a good evening, everyone.